So the story behind sending to Detroit was basically uh, I'd been watching this fascinating documentary on Open University about Detroit and its management of sewage and um, its sort of management of water supplies and so on. And it um, it was talking about this big, brand new, expensive sewage system they had there, which uh, was in 1988. It was brand new, I think. Then they alluded to the fact that uh, there were a lot of problems with algal blooms um, because of the phosphates and the nitrates that were being produced by the said um, management of sewage and also industrial effluent and so on. Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! I then happened at the same time to be watching, at, not at, on some occasion, uh, a video, because it's that dates me, a video of um, a movie called Kentucky Fried Movie, which was a sort of uh, collection of sketches, um, generally of quite poor taste, but also quite funny, um, made by the makers of, a of Airplane. And they have a, a sketch in it, which uh, is a sort of piss take of Bruce Lee's kind of movies and these sort of kung fu movies. And they always have like an evil dictator who is the, the, the kind of the main person that the person's battling against the protagonist. And uh, he gets this CIA agent and he says... Uh, so talk or you know tell me everything you know or whatever and the man says you can't scare me there's nothing you can do that'll frighten me or whatever and uh, he says well then send him to detroit and uh, at that point the guy breaks down and says no 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 not detroit blah 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 it's the way i kill him but anyway i thought this was very funny uh although you know as i say it's kind of because detroit's had a rather rough time uh, because of the industry sort of grinding down in the 1960s and 70s and the fact that it had a pretty tough time in the 1970s for people living there. So, uh, as I said, poor taste, but I thought it was quite a funny gag. It sort of melded between that and the, the, the sewage plant thing and somehow that's how the lyrics came about. I then sort of sat down at the piano and I kind of did this little 12 bar thing uh, which Neil then turned into this rather sweet little figure but essentially it was the, the, the 12 bar thing that I presented him with. <laughs> Um, and we ended up with the the song as it is. And we have first recorded it. Um, with, I think the band was at that time called Andrew Mitchell's second act because I'm not egotistical at all. <laughs> it was featured on an album, which was my first album actually, uh, which was Less Is More. So I think it's one of the tracks on that. Uh, with the great Sam Kelly playing drums on it originally. And then we went back to the name The AM Band. So it... Uh, it was just after the AM Blues Band had kind of fizzled out, really. It was a roughly around the same time. 
um, but it was just a little, maybe six months later. When I came to put the whole thing back together again, the, the, the kind of the idea of the blues band again, it seemed like a natural song to put in the set. So that, that was where it sort of originated. Nine hundred years to come. I make reference to two thousand and one, and that was, in fact, the, the sort of inspiration for the lyrical ideas in there, and also a rather kind of crude sentiment suggested to me by Mike Caton, who was a guitarist uh, I knew at the time, and uh, it was written a long, long time ago when I was about fifteen. And that was done, you know, back in the days when I used to attack the keyboard. And so you've got footage of me mangling a Fender Rhodes or something, uh, trying to do my sort of impersonation of Emerson, Lake and Palmer or something. Um, <clears throat> but that was that was that era when that song uh, came into existence. And we we played that live a few times, quite a few times actually, and we messed around with it. And um, by the end of it, 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 because the drummer was mad on Robert Wyatt, we went into this weird manic jazz attempt uh, in the middle with the solo. And that later kind of made its way onto a demo that I did back in the 90s um, when I had my sort of my studio set up, which went under the name Catalyst records or whatever. I'd never done a version of it that was releasable, really, um, although the demo was not bad in those days. I, that was one that I felt I wanted to record and give it the full works with the string section and really make it kind of a big sound. Really nice. Just, but? Uh, um, just <laughs> hang on to the note a little bit longer at the, at the end. end. Yeah. Um, I mean, good, but just, just, yeah, just don't, just, you know, Fade carry, it, it, carry, carry it, yeah. on until you're ready to stop, though. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in same key, I think. Okay. <laughs> Take me out, maybe I get into the world nine hundred years to come. Call me a fool, 
You brought to you, yeah, but it took the world nine million years to come.